Hi, my name is Jason Nash. I'm the Data Center Practice Director for Vero, and today we're going to do a quick demonstration of Synology's iSCSI LUN backup feature. This is a really useful feature for anybody who uses iSCSI LUNs on their NAS for things like VMware storage, Hyper-V storage, uh, iSCSI destination targets for Windows or Linux boxes, anything like that. And so it lets you easily make a backup of those uh, anytime you want to. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now, in my lab, I'll be working with two Synologies. This one here called Unicron. He's a large DS3611XS. And then Lab Station, which is a DS1010. So this feature works across, I think, almost all the current models, of the, at least the last generation or two. So it probably works with whatever you have. But one thing you need to do first is enable something on the target. So you can do a backup of an iSCSI LUN to another volume or directory or external device on the same Synology or across the network to another one and that's what I'm going to do. Now before you do it to the other one you have to enable the backup service. So come in, go to control panel, network backup here at the bottom, and check this box. You'll need to do this for other things like folder sync and some of the rsync configuration but if you want to do iSCSI backup you have to do it as well. So just check the box, hit apply, and that's really all you have to worry about. Back to the source. So this is the source. Log into him. And we'll come up here and we'll go back up and restore. Now you've got a few tabs. One of them real quick I want to show you. Doesn't have to do with the iSCSI backup, but it's a configuration backup. And it's something a lot of people don't realize a Synology can do. So all these little settings, customizations, users, all that are stored in the config. What if you lose all that? Well, just hit backup configuration. And it'll say, look, we're going to create a backup file, user group, folders, file services, NFS, FTP, all this stuff. We'll say OK, and it downloads a little DSS file. So you should periodically go in and do that. That way, if you ever need to, you can come back in here and restore it. So again, you know, it's not part of the iSCSI configuration but it is a handy feature and something I wanted to touch on. So back over to the Backup tab. Now I've already created one job and I want to do that so we'll have one ready to go here in a minute but I'll show you how to create another one. So go to Create and you have two options. Data Backup, which is basically just backing up the data in the file system, you know, your shared folders, your things like that, or LUN Backup. We're going to do LUN Backup for the iSCSI LUNs. It'll tell you what the wizard's going to do. It's going to have you name it pick your destination, what are you backing up, and do you want to do it on a schedule. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, give it a name. Uh, you know, demo iSCSI backup. And it says is this local to an external disk or a, or a system folder here on the local Synology or network. As I said, I'm going to do network. That way if something happens to that NAS or the drives in it, I have another copy of my data. So we'll say next. And then it says IP address and log in to the destination NAS. Now you can hit the drop down and choose, you know, it'll go discover them, but I already know my IP, so I'll use that. And next. Then it says, okay, here's the destination folders on your destination NAS. Pick one. So I'm going to use one here called lab. And then pick a directory. So I will do, you know, demo copy. Now when you do a directory, I've already got one pulled up here. So I've already gone to that NAS lab and the existing job that I've got. And what it does is it creates a bunch of 4 gig files, so as many as it needs to hold the data for that LUN. But it just gives you an idea of how it's stored. Um, not a problem. What I'd love to see them do in a later version, maybe DSM-5 or something, would be to actually copy that, that LUN to the destination I, uh, Synology and then you know, copy it as a full line and then mount it as an I, under the iSCSI target on the other Synology so uh, you can mount it remotely from a host and pull data off of it. You know, that'd be a nice to have. Again, I'm always asking for enterprise level features in these boxes and they, they do an amazing amount for, for, you know, what they cost and everything. But I'd love to see that in a later version. But now uh, you can see how it just stores those in a file. So we'll come back and give it the directory name and hit next. And it says what's your source. This is the LUN you're backing up. Now, gotcha here. You can only do one job per LUN. So, for example, I had to create a second LUN here because the LUN I used on this existing job doesn't show up. 
So just heads up if you're like, well, I don't understand why it's not showing up, or gives you an error that there's no available LUNs for doing backups, you may already have a job that exists. So pick your LUN, hit next, and then you can schedule it. So you can enable schedule, do an advanced schedule, or just say, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do it manually. You know, it depends. The cool thing about scheduling, well, really manual, but really, you know, you're probably going to want to schedule this, is it does a full copy the first time. After that, it does an incremental copy. So if you have a terabyte iSCSI LUN, it's not going to throw a terabyte worth of data across the wire every so often when you tell it to do a scheduled backup. It's going to do incrementals. So it's going to save you a lot of transfer time and, and bandwidth. So, you know, it's not a bad thing to set this up to run. Also, it obviously does it with live data, meaning when I did my backup of this guy, I had a, some VMs running on it live. And it, what it does is it creates kind of a point in time snapshot. So if you haven't seen the other video, I've got one up where we show the new snapshot features in 4.2 beta, but this kind of has done this under the cover since this feature came out. And if you don't understand how this works, one thing I want to get across to you is this is what's known as crash consistent. So that sounds a little scary to people that don't, you know, understand how snapshots work. But the bottom line is this. It is live data. When your backup job kicks off, it kind of takes a look at that LUN as it sits right then keeps that point in time and that's what it copies. So 10 minutes later as it's copying and data is changing on the LUN because VMs are running, it's still going to copy it as it was when you first hit copy. So if those VMs were not powered down, they are copied over to the destination just like they had had the power pulled out from under them, you know, and the data is what it is. Most operating systems, most applications will boot up, see that they went down in kind of an inconsistent state, go back through transaction logs or, or just, you know, file system journaling or whatever, go to the last known good state and boot up just fine. Just like you pull the power on your PC or a server, they'll boot up. If you need something more advanced than that, that's where you get into backup software and applications. But this, for 90% of the 98% of the time, does the job just fine. So with all that said, I would suggest you do a schedule. I'm just going to say go ahead and do it immediately and I'll worry about a schedule later. So it's going to tell you everything that it's going to do, and we'll say apply. So off it's going to go performing this. Now there's no date on this LUN, so it may go pretty quick. And you can actually watch it. If you have your you know resource monitor up, you'll see it throwing data across. But in the end, when it's done, we can take a look at this one. So the way you restore this is you go to the Restore tab. And then you can say, you know, click a button. Do you want to do a data or a LUN? Well, we're going to do LUN. And it tells you the steps of the wizard again. So it says, okay, you've got some options. If you have an existing task, you can say, I want to restore the LUN from that existing task. That's pretty cool because it just knows everything about the destination and the target. But this may be a new Synology. You may want to restore this LUN to one that has not existed. So then you could say, I want to restore it from a network. So it's kind of up to you. If you already have a job, do the job, else just do it manually. And then it's going to look very much like it did before, where it's going to say, give me the IP, the name, password. So we'll go ahead and do that. You can test it. It's successful. And it says, give me the shared folder. Mine was lab. And the directory, Unicron. And it says, where do you want it to go as your destination? Mm, two and then it'll go. So if I hit apply it would go. I don't want to do that because I don't want to roll my LUN back. But that's how you would do a restore. So if you do you know, have an issue with the LUN, you just go through and do this manual restore process. It's very simple. Also, let's see, so off it goes. Let's see. Yeah, a little bit of data. It's not going too fast yet. But you can come in. You can look and get info. and It tells you information about what your schedule is, when's the last time it did a backup, what the, you know, if it's success or failure. You can look at edit it, you know, if you want to edit the job, here's your source, here's your schedule, your destination, same thing that we entered. If you have an issue and it's not working, you can do your test connection. Huh, that's funny. There it is. You can delete from here. And if you have a job, uh, like I have here manually, you can say backup now. It'll kick off that job again. Uh, if you want to stop it, you just hit cancel. So 
and off it goes. I believe it'll only run one job at a time. I think that's correct. I saw that in some of the information. So when this one finishes, it'll probably start on the other one. But that's it. I mean, it's a really useful feature. Uh, you can do you know, incremental copies or backups of iSCSI lines, both locally to the same Synology or remotely to another one. Uh, and then you can just do a restore if need be. But again, these are one of these kind of edge, on the edge of an enterprise type array function that a lot of people don't realize that these boxes can do. And it's why I think they make great small, you know, especially virtualization hosts, which is what I do. Uh, and I've, you know, constantly finding things these things do that I didn't even realize they offered. So that, that's it for the demo. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.